John, was there a point in the season when when you felt that all the new players and the returning players surrendered, that you just, when I say surrendered, they bought in to, to this whole idea of, of togetherness and, and personal sacrifice. It's not me, it's we. Was there a point in the, in the, uh, in the season when you felt, okay, I, I got total buy-in now? These kids all recruit each other. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. Now you re recruit one or two kids, and they recruit the other kids, and then they all want to play together. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't have as much of that. Second thing is, it's unique here. I have a brand-new team every year. So it's not like I have five guys returning, six guys returning, and I'm bringing in four, and I'll, oh, they may, my guys all go pro. I haven't figured out if they don't like me. <laughs> they haven't been here long enough. Well, they, yeah, they haven't been here long enough to really hate me, but the other guys in the other programs stay. I don't know if they like their coach more than my guys like me, but my guys leave. So I'm coming in. The most important thing is that my freshmen get along, and they did. Now, if you want to ask me when I knew, all right, we got this, is when DeMarcus truly began to play the position the way you had to play it. Mm -hmm. And that is you got studs all around you. You're going to lead the nation in assists. Just throw it to somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, you score to keep them honest. You score to keep them honest. You're not scoring to score. You're scoring to keep them honest. They don't want to play you, shoot the ball. I don't care if it goes in or not. They give you lanes to the rim, you take them. You're scoring to make sure they're guarding you. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is you're here to run our team and play unbelievable defense. He was a pit bull. You couldn't run pick and roll against us. Now, you take that game away from all these college teams – you weren't running pick and roll. One, we really had a big man that could wall up. We didn't go show and aggressive. Ah, we went back. And he fought over. Now, how many guards are pit bullish enough to just say, you're not screening me? So you say to me, when did you know? As soon as I knew this kid got it. The other kids were all in that range, and they weren't selfish, and they cared about one another, and they all accepted. He just, it was hard because he had never played the position as a point guard. Mm -hmm. So he was, by the end of the year, I'm going to tell you, Marcus Teague was the best, I don't care what you tell me, the best point guard in the country at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. He really was. And who, who, which of the incoming freshmen, John, uh, adapted to the system the quickest? Well, um, first of all, you had that would leave probably Michael, or that would leave Gilchrist. Anthony Davis, mm -hmm. yeah, Michael Kidd. Um, Michael Kidd, the issue that I had to teach Michael Kidd was you cannot go at 600 miles an hour on every play, on every possession, every moment. You want to go hard pace offensively, I'm talking about. Um, rebound and bust, but there's a point that you got to have pace. And that's what we had to teach him. Because he'd be out of control going so hard. You know, now you're mm -hmm. running people over. Mm -hmm. The dribble drive does get you to attack. But if you're out of control and your mind's moving fast, you're going to run people over. Mm -hmm. With Anthony, we had to give him some post game. Now, he went from 6'3 to 6'9. He truly thought he was a two guard. <laughs> okay, so now, he probably still does. And, and he does. So now, you know, Kenny Payne did a great job. All the pre-practice. And he forced them over here. And now all of a sudden the kid's got that jump hook. Well, you, how you, his reach and he's doing, and then he makes it. Um, the lobs and all that came natural. You know, all we had to do was get comfortable throwing it. Um, but I, I would tell you those two were, they adapted pretty quick to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, John, w was there a point in the season when you s saw, that, hey, these, these guys are really starting to maturate into something special did, was there a point in the season when you had to readjust your, your, your vision going forward and your goals going forward? Best thing that happened to us and the thing that kept us going was the Indiana loss. Mm -hmm. uh, we should have won the game. Indiana played better and should have beaten us, but we came back and got up. Mm -hmm. We make free throws, we win the game. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony was in foul trouble, we were going to win anyway. And they come back. And, and they, on a last-second play, we leave a man. The kid makes that three. They charge the court. Okay, they literally, we, we couldn't get out of the building. ESPN made it a commercial. The rest of the season. It was season, a motivational commercial. I, want, I put it in 
game tapes. Mm -hmm. So they'd be watching game tape, and all of a sudden that commercial came up. Mm -hmm. Now, ration, 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 mm -hmm. mission, you know. Mm -hmm. And they said, when they lost that game, we walked off, and they said, we're not losing anymore. And we didn't lose again until we lost to Vanderbilt in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, up five with a couple minutes to go, missed every sh wide open shots, which we had never missed, missed them. Now, let me tell you what happens that game, and you'll find out this is the kind of team I had. We're in a 20-some game, I don't know how many game win streak, but we hadn't lost since the buzzer beater against Indiana. Um, we're playing Vandy's 30 minutes before the game. Michael Gilchrist comes in. Coach, I want to come off the bench today. Start Darius. What? I don't, I'm not feeling good. You look fine to me. Tell me, what are you talking about, Michael? I, I think I need to come off the bench today. Stop. Sit down. Tell me what you're saying. Look, Coach, Darius is playing awful. You're killing him. Let him start and get going. We need him in the NCAA tournament. I'll come off the bench. Ooh, powerful. You're 18 years old. Powerful. You're the youngest freshman in the country, and you do that? Powerful okay. and mature. Darius starts, because you know I'm going to roll with it. Mm-hmm. Take 17 shots. That means we're losing. Mm -hmm. We lost. Michael got in foul trouble. Didn't play well. Foul trouble. Wasn't used to coming off the bench. But it won us the national title. Because from that point on, Darius played well. Part of it is, this guy cares about me that much. I'm going to get my act together. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not. It's not. I'm. That's where I say you play more for your teammates than yourself. Mm -hmm. The game becomes easy. Mm -hmm. We all live our lives for other people. Not as hard to live. If we're all living for ourselves, and I want to live for my secretary. I want our kids in private school. I want every one of my, my assistant coaches to be, become head coaches and millionaires that are socially conscious, that watch what we do for charity and getting involved in community, that they spread out and do the same thing. I want every one of my players, the cycle in their lives to change, whether it's poverty for their existence, their family's been in poverty. And now all of a sudden, you get a chance to help that family mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives change. And if it's a Derrick Rose, mm -hmm. he's going to be able to take care of his family, his family's family, his family's family's family, and maybe the family's family, family, family. Mm -hmm. How about a fatherless son that they've never really had fathers in their lives? Well, those kids that played for you saw what it was like to be a father. You not only were a father to them, you were a father to your own children. They saw you as a man that they wanted to emulate. John Thompson. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Aside from being a coach that coached them, he became their father. Well, guess what? They learn now how to be a father. Mm -hmm. So I have my staff. We're all married. We all have children. One person can come in my gym when I'm talking. Bounce a ball, whistle, skip. My son. Mm -hmm. He could knock over the ball rack. And my first thought, who? Hey, Brad, how are you, kid? Mm -hmm. He comes in. If I'm coaching defense, he'll be going. Ss, ss. He shoots a ball. Good shot, kid. All right. All right, come on, get that chart. Mm -hmm. He's the one person that can come in my gym anytime he wants. He can tug. Dad, can you come down and shoot? I can't right now, kid. Just go down. Hey, take him down there and shoot. All right, let's go. Come on, keep doing the drill. Mm -hmm. I want them to see. That's my child. Mm -hmm. And how I am with my wife. I want them to see it. You know, I talk about women all the time. You respect women. And we go through the whole thing, that how, what they can get dragged into and how they can react. So, uh, you know, you're trying to teach more than that, what you've been able to do over your lifetime.